Hello grade 9 learners, in this short video I'm going to be going over direct and inverse proportion. Sometimes inverse proportion is referred to as indirect proportion. I'm going to go over the difference, I'm going to show you examples, and then you guys are going to practice an example. Let's go. Now first of all, what is the difference between direct and inverse proportion? Let me illustrate with an example. Direct proportion refers to a relationship between two variables where if the one variable goes up, the other variable will go up. They do the same thing. If one variable goes down, the other variable will go down as well. So if one variable increases, so does the other increase. If one variable decreases, so does the other variable decrease. Here's an example. I sell sweets at break. Let's pretend. The more sweets I sell, so as the number of sweets increases, the number of sweets that I sell increases, the number, well the amount rather, of money that I make increases. So as one variable increases, so number of sweets, as number of sweets increases, the amount of money in rands, let's say, amount of money in rands or dollars that I make increases. That's direct. Remember, it's not only increase and increase, it could be decrease and decrease. Let's look at inverse. Now inverse is always trickier to find examples of and I always ask my classes what do you guys think of inverse and they always struggle more with inverse. A very common example is number of builders or people that it takes to complete a job versus the time taken or time required to complete that job. So say for example I've got number of builders building a house. If I increase the number of builders building my house, what will happen to the time it takes to build the house? Well, the time, let's say in hours or in days or whatever, the time it takes to complete that job will decrease. So inverse proportion is simply, as the one variable increases, the other variable decreases. So as one variable, so time as time decreases, number of builders increase. Whatever, they do the opposite, you know what I mean. Let's look at an example with numbers. So direct proportion, as x increases, y also increases. Or as x decreases, y also decreases. And it's important to say in the same proportion. So what that in the same proportion means, it means if x doubles, y will double. If x triples, y will triple. You see what I mean by by the same proportion, by the same amount. If x halves, y will half. That same proportion is very important. And how do I work out the proportion? You take the one variable divided by the other variable. So I wrote over here, x divided by y is a constant. That word constant means it'll stay the same, it'll be the same. So I said x divided by y. We could also do y divided by x. Either way, the one variable divided by the other will be a constant. Let's look at my lollipop example. The more lollipops I sell, look what happens to lollipops. As lollipops increases, the number or the amount of rand that I make increases. In each case, x divided by y should be a constant. So in the first case, I've got 2 divided by 4. That gives me a half. I've got 3 divided by 6. That gives me a half. I've got 4 divided by 8, that gives me a half. Do you see what's happening here, guys? 5 divided by 10, that gives me a half. So in each case, the one variable divided by the other gives me a constant. If I flip the situation around and I said, well, instead of doing lollipops divided by rand, I'm going to do rand divided by lollipops. So y divided by x. So the bottom number divided by the top number. What's 4 divided by 2? 2. What's 6 divided by 3? 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2 and 10 divided by 5 is 2. So can you see that the one variable divided by the other is a constant? It's the same. And if I had to plot this on the graph, this is what it would look like. The graph would be a straight line graph that goes through the origin, which means that it goes through this piece over here. The origin is a zero, zero over there. It's a straight line. So as the one variable increases, the other variable increases. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So if I had to ask you guys, right guys, so now I'm going to sell, let's say, 
25 lollipops. How much rand must I make? You'll tell me. Okay, cool. How did I get from 4 to 8? I times by 2. How did I get from 3 to 6? I times by 2. Or I said 6 divided by 3 is a half. 8 divided by 4 is a half. Remember, it's a constant. So how would I get the amount of rand if I give you 25 lollipops? You would say 25 times 2. So I would have 50 rand if I sold 25 lollipops. And you could do the same for any lollipop or rand value I give you. You know the constant, so you can work it out. Let's take a look at inverse proportion. So remember, inverse proportion is as the one variable increases, the other variable decreases. They do the opposite, but they do so by the same proportion. So if the one variable doubles, the other variable will halve. If the one variable gets three times as bigger, the other one will get three times as smaller. That's what I mean by in the same proportion. And remember for direct proportion, it was the one variable divided by the other variable was a constant. Here it's the one variable multiplied by the other variable is a constant. So here's an example. Remember I said it's often people doing a job and the time it takes. It's a very common example. So here I've got two people clean a class in three hours. If I increase the number of people, so I go from three, two to three to six, look what happens to the time. I'm going from two to three to six, I'm increasing the number of people. So the people are going up the number of people. Look what's happening to the time. The time is going down. And if I multiply those two variables together, so number of people, so number of people and the time and hours, if I multiply those two together, multiply, I get six in every single case. Six is my constant. Two times three is six, three times two is six, six times one is six. That is inverse proportion. And represented on a graph, it looks like this. As my one variable goes up, so imagine I'm going, I'm increasing on this axis. What's happening to my other variable? It's going down. In the next video, we're going to go over two examples that you can try yourself. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. There'll be loads more videos where this one is coming from. See you guys in the next one.